All right, good morning and welcome everyone. So excited for our Be The Change connection call. Where are you joining us from? We're just starting with a little bit of gratitude. Awesome, we're live on Facebook today. It's working as well. Woohoo! How incredible is Zoom? I'm very grateful for Zoom. All righty, let me turn my music down. Let me see where you're all tuning in from. Newcastle. Scott, can you hear me now? Can everyone hear me okay? Awesome. Turn the speakers up. Okay, we've got, oh, I can see Canada representing. Grateful for lockdown to be a part of the positive change that is going on. I see that too. That's a great point, Gabby. I see that too. Welcome. Now I'm going to find my friend Scott Harris. There he is. There's his whiteboard. Getting ready. I'll see when he comes back. Okay, so I want to know what else you guys are grateful for right now. I started, I made the, the biggest mistake of all and I looked at my phone before I got my head right this morning, not a good idea. <laughs> and it's just, if you're not in the right estate management, it's like, boom, it just in, in the swirl happens. Good morning, Scotty, here he is. I really wanna use our time effectively. So we're gonna jump right in. Um, welcome everyone to Be The Change Call. I'm so excited to introduce this incredible guest speaker today who I happen to have the honor of being friends with. And I, there's a few familiar faces on here that Scott knows. And the one thing that Scott Harris does more than anyone else I know is he just calls it how it is. And with that, he gives you incredible insight and wisdom. And when I think about how Scott shows up in the world, his love and passion to see people be their very best version to grow, and do the things that they're really here and made to do. This guy lives that um, more than anyone I know. He's just going to do whatever it takes to get the very, very best version of you. So who better to talk us through this morning on how to not only survive, we're well beyond surviving, we're thriving kind of people. And he's going to take us through the best tips, the four steps, like every good coaching, there's steps, isn't there, Scotty? So I'm going to hand over to you. Scott has worked. He's going to share a bit more about his story. He's worked with Tony Robbins for, is it 30 years now, Scotty? Hang on, I can't hear you. I did try and unmute you and something strange happened. So. There you go. How's that? Is that better? Yes. Yes. Now I can hear you. Thank you. Hey, hey. Good morning. At uh, 25. 25. Nice number. We're all old. <laughs> we are. <laughs> I've been getting ready for an hour, so I look this good. It shows. It shows. <laughs> I wonder what happens. You, know, you will probably mute yourself at your end. I'm going to look down occasionally because my camera is there. But good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome. Thank you for that beautiful, kind introduction. Um, hey, listen, let's just get straight into it. This is all about you. I love working from home. I think working from home, I love the lockdown. I think it's the coolest thing ever. Um, and I can give you 10 reasons why I love it. And I guess if I was going to start with anywhere this morning, before I give you some steps about what to do, I'm, I'd start with that. I'd start with our beliefs. So, because um, that's the whole key, you know, in the teaching, coaching, mentoring I've been doing for 20 years, in building your business, most of you are in the same business that I've been doing the last whatever, a couple of years, it's all about belief. So the first thing I would say to you before I'd say anything about here's a system and here's a structure and here's a schedule and all those things would be to really, really decide what are going to be your beliefs about this next chapter of our lives. And a couple of quick pre-frames. Number one, stop watching the news. Um, just stop it. Just stop it. Like, that's it. That's my coaching. Stop watching the news. You need 15 minutes of news in the morning to see what the current new regulations are. Um, that's it. You need 15 minutes to check whatever newspaper you read to go, great, here is the three new things. I can only be in groups of two. I can't do this. I can't do that. But it needs to be 15 minutes. You do not need to know what's happening in New York City. You do not need to know 
what's happening in Italy. You don't even need to know what's happening in Victoria, for goodness sake, unless you're from Victoria. Um, it's just stupid. There's singularly no reason to be lying in bed at night at 10.30 at night, still scanning the world's news for which city's got the most deaths in coronavirus. So that's kind of my first bit of coaching. Stop watching the news. You need 15 minutes, get your update, get it every day, just so you know where the kids can go, where they can't go. Can you ride your bike? Can you not ride your bike? And then move on. Outside of that, if it was me, I would want to say, great, I, there's things I cannot control and there's things I can control. So we'll just put that real simple. There are some things that I can control. There are some things that I cannot control. And there are some things I can influence. So what I cannot control is Scotty Morrison. What I cannot control is the regulations about where I can go and where I can't go. What I cannot control is uh, any of the stuff about banking and the regulatory system and any of that stuff. I can't control any of that stuff. So I've only got so many meg of RAM in my brain and so much emotional space. Just stop thinking about stuff that you can't control. There's no point to it. The only validation, the only reason to focus on stuff you can't control is because it allows you to get distracted from the stuff that you can control. I, I don't care about things that I can't control. I don't care about the weather. I don't care about stuff that's happening that, that I don't have any influence over. So just stop worrying about it. Now, it doesn't mean you be stupid and ignore the virus. That's why you still get your news update every day because there's things you can control and there's things you can influence. Now, the things you can control with 100% total certainty, 100%, irrespective of the virus, Scotty Morrison, whoever your prime minister or president is, the things you can control are your beliefs, your beliefs. And so for me, when you think about, many of you have not chosen this scenario. I want to be clear. I chose this scenario. I chose literally 25 years ago. I had a I had about a 10, 15 year career in hospitality, where I used to get up, get dressed, put my work clothes on, buy my shirt, carry my briefcase, go to work, work 10, 12, 15 hours a day, six days a week, made lots and lots of money, had a Mercedes, had a big house, blah, 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 blah. But literally it was like going to prison. I had to go to prison every day. And I consciously made a decision to say, I want to work from home. Here's why. So I've done that for gosh, 20 years now. And so some of you have not chosen this thing. And so you're struggling with that. You've got a bit of a battle about that, but this thing is being forced upon me and you haven't yet found the greatness in it. You haven't yet found the silver lining in it. And you're still, maybe you found a couple of good things. You know, you don't have to shower and shave every day. You can wear bare feet. Maybe there are a couple of the upsides, but maybe your jury is still 50-50 out. And so I want to make sure I'm going to share with you my five key beliefs. Now, I just want to check in, Linda, just give me a thumbs up, Linda, does it sound okay? Everything's working? Great. I'm going to give you my, my five key beliefs about why working from home rocks. Like literally, I redesigned part of my home so that it would work. So here's the first one. And the first one for me, you may laugh at this, but this is really important to me, like really important to me. The number one belief that I have about why working from home rocks is that there's no commute. There's no car. I freaking hate getting in the car unless I'm going on holidays. So the fact that I don't have to drive anywhere and waste 10, 20, 30, 45, 55 minutes in a car with other idiots on the road, holy smokes. I love that there's no commute. I literally had a call from my accountant about four years ago. He said, Scotty, we have a challenge. I said, oh, what's the challenge? He said, we literally cannot use your car anymore for the business because you're driving less than 5,000 kilometers a year. You don't meet the criteria to have a business that requires a vehicle. Like, oh shit, that's a problem. So I love that. that. That for me is a big one. Now you may say, Scotty, I love driving my car. Great. On the weekend, go for a drive in a field or a forest with your Hot Hits Tomato FM on or your Golden Classics and play the music. But then the six days of the week, the fuck would you want to get in your car? That's a stupid idea. So that's my number one belief. I love it. No commute. I like, I can walk barefoot with my juice 
which I'm still drinking this morning, I can walk barefoot from the kitchen to whatever desk you're working at. And I don't care if the desk is in your spare room, as mine has been for 25 years, or the desk is in your bedroom, or it's in the hallway, or you're using the kitchen table, whichever that. But that's my first belief. Second belief, and this one is total straight up fact. The second coolest thing about working from home is that you have more time. You, we literally have right now more of the most precious thing, the thing that we've craved the most, the thing that we've used as an excuse not to learn guitar and not to clean up the spare room and not to do our taxes and not to get better stuff. The literally the number one excuse that we've had for not doing stuff is now gone because we literally have more time than we've ever had before. You're not cruising around the shopping center for two hours. You're not going to the movies. You're not going to restaurants. You're not going to cafes. You're not picking up the kids from school. You're not going to Taekwondo and gymnastics and ballet. You got no, you got more time than you've had before in your life. How cool is that? That the universe just gifted you a big shit bucket full of time, like probably eight, 10, 12, 15, 20 hours a week. Like if I'd said to you four months ago, before this new scenario happened, I said, hey, listen, I got 20 hours a week in a bucket. I could give it to you. What's it worth to you? You'd be like, oh my God, I'll pay a hundred grand for it. Like 20 hours a week is literally worth, well, it's priceless in my mind. And it's priceless either because you could put some of that to work in your business, drop an extra 10 hours a week in your business. You could put some into your health, drop an extra hour a day in your health. That's five hours a week. Drop an extra hour a day into your kids or your marriage. Great, there's an extra five hours a week. Boom, your whole life just changed because you've got this thing going on right now called more time. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about having more time. Uh, who, who's excited about having more time right now? I mean, we're doing crazy stuff. Yes, we're doing puzzles and we're playing Monopoly, but I tell you, but as a coach for the last 20 years, I've heard so many people say, oh, I haven't got time for that. I haven't got time for that. I'm too busy. You don't understand. I'm a busy working mom. I go to do drop-offs and pickups. So I got to cook. I got to shop. No, there's none of that. There's none of that. Now, for some of you, that might be scary because you're like, well, actually, I haven't got that excuse anymore. That, that's, that's not the reason I haven't done it this week. It's, there's a different reason. So that's my second thing. My third one, my third belief, my third reason why I love working from home is I have total control. I have total control over my space. I have total control over the music, over the sounds. I have total control over what smells and what oils I'm burning. I got the crystal lamp going on over there because I'm a bit of a foo foo. I got total control over the air conditioning, windows open, air conditioning on, curtains open, curtain closed, lights on, lights off. If I want a mirror on the wall, a picture on the wall, a map on the wall, a calendar on the wall, I have total control over my physical environment. I have total control whether I've got a big fat green juicy smoothie on my desk or I'm walk, working in bare feet. I have total control. This space is mine and I'm running my business from it and I get to do whatever the heck I want. I don't know about you, if you've had a job, or even a business, you had to go to the business. You had a business, you had staff and you had a team, you had to have a foyer and a lobby and a bathroom and a tea room and all that stuff. Many of you had businesses before or a corporate job. I said, I do. You don't have control over that. You might have influence, but you don't have control. So I love total control. There's no excuse for anything in your environment right now not to be 100% exactly the way that you would like it to be. Just change it. You can still order stuff online. Stuff will still come from Ikea. If you want a picture, a poster, I said smells, I like to control those. I want to control the air, temperature, the ambience, the energy, what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, what I'm dressed in. Total, complete control. For me, I think it's pretty cool. So. Freedom, we like that. I'm loving no school pickup. How many of you are loving no pickups and drop-offs? Truthfully, moms, dads, how many are loving that? <laughs> I think we got to a stage where we had 28. 28 individual pickups and drop-offs in a week. Trust me, it is a great thing. Now, the fourth reason, and I don't know if I could say this, but I can, I think, see a good friend of mine, Tracy, on the call, and she'll like this. Linda, I'll probably get in trouble for but the number four reason I love working from home is that there's no no dickheads. I'm not sorry, I can't say that. But like, it's like there's no dickheads. 
yeah, if you work, and I have people work from my house. Some of you will have assistants and staff and whatever. But there's no dickheads. And how many of you have had a job or a business where you have to talk to a dickhead every day? Raise your hand if you've ever had to talk to a dickhead every day. Not if you're married to them. You can't say that. <laughs> That's not true. But I just, I, and I say that with tongue in cheek, but I just, I don't want to have to deal with anybody I don't want to deal with. I don't want to have to make nice. I don't want to have to be appropriate. I don't want to have something like, obviously. I don't want to have to um, have false structured friendships with the guy in the office or the lady in the desk next to me if I don't want to. I'm 52. I'm too old for that. So for me, core belief is no. If I need to meet you, you can meet me by Skype or Zoom or you can come to my office in my house and meet me there. But I don't want to have all this false nonsense and all these false friendships and these false structured relationships with people I don't like that I literally... I'm only in a relationship with because I'm working with them. It's just too old for that. It's just stupid. That's just a stupid, stupid, stupid thing. So that's my fourth one. And then my fifth thing, these are my five, these are my five core reasons and my five core beliefs why I love what's happening right now. Trust me, when the fan gets lifted, I'm not moving. I'm going to still be working from this little space right here. And the fifth one is obvious. And that is... You get to be closer to your loved ones. What's not spectacular about the fact that you are working with the people you love in your house? What's not spectacular? And we'll chat about this in a minute, but what's not spectacular about being able to hear a little pitter pat of footsteps or yelling and screaming, or know that your spouse, your husband, your wife is literally in the room next door? What's that's only spectacular? What if I've only got about, I'm hoping to get to 92, 93, 94. That's my plan which means I've got about 40 years left. Why would I want to spend any of those days away from my spouse? I've got kids that are 12, 10, 8, and 6. Just wisdom is five years away from going off to university. Why would I want to miss any of those days? I've got to work for 60 hours a week in somebody else's building. I don't even understand that. That just seems stupid. Why would I, of the 168 hours I have in a week, why would I spend 50 of them working at someone else's building and then 10 hours or 15 hours commuting I'm going to do that. That seems bizarre. So for me, I love that I am close to the people I love the most and that they are nearby physically all that time. They're my, that's kind of my favorite thing. So that for me is literally, now I can give you 10 more. I would coach you on this. I would coach you on this. What are yours? You literally need to write them down. If you're not yet in love with this current scenario, oh, I'm missing the gym. Well, great. You can work out at home on your back porch naked. Great, do that. Like, if you're not yet in love with this current scenario, you've got to fall in love with it. And the way you fall in love with it is you change your beliefs. So you're going to jot down three to five core beliefs. And you're like, oh man, this is why I'm loving working from home. And if you've got a couple of beliefs that are getting in the way, of like, no, but I really miss my girlfriends or I really miss, you know, getting dressed up or I really miss the, my latte from that shop along the way, you got to find a way to replace or replicate, replace or replicate those rituals you're missing because this needs to be 100% buy-in. You have to 100% buy into, I freaking love this experience because we don't know how long it's going to go for. People are talking about numbers, one month, three months, six months. In your 15 minutes of news in the morning, you might see that Boris in the UK is talking about this going for six months. Uh, if you read Donald, Donald saying it might go for two more weeks because Donald's an idiot. Um, others are saying it's going to go for one month. Nobody has any clue. We literally are operating in complete and total uncertainty. More uncertainty than anybody on this call has ever had in their entire lives. That's a big sense. Not since 1944 with the Second World War and maybe 1915 with the First World War and Spanish flu and maybe 1890 with the Great Depression, which is before the 1930s one, has our culture had this much uncertainty? And in times of uncertainty, which I cannot control, what I can control are my core global beliefs. That's the part I'd be getting you to really write down. I'll say it again, write down. I'll say it again, write down. I'd be writing those down first and I'd be sticking them on my poster board. I'd be sticking them on my laptop. I'll be sticking them on the mirror in my office and I'll be looking at them all that time. So 
That's my core beliefs. Now, I'm gonna check in with my boss. Linda, how are we doing? Is everyone doing okay? Yes. Can I just keep going? Keep going. Go okay, great. So now I just want to give you just three really, really simple things, just simple things that I do at home that I know are effective. And I it's funny, I've coached lots and lots of people, and I've coached lots of people in their journey from working in a business and a corporate world, and their dream is I want to be able to make a hundred grand and work from home. And then we coach them and they get that dream, and it turns out to be a nightmare because most people have to be very careful about what you wish for. And I'm telling you, my friends, the single biggest responsibility you can have, now this is serious now, pay attention. The single biggest responsibility that you have is the allocation of your time. And most people are not qualified and not skilled and really honestly um, not ready for the responsibility of allocating your time. Most people function very well when they are told what to do, where to stand, what to do while they're standing there, and how long to stand there. That's why the industrial system works. Since the industrial revolution, when everybody came off the farm and off the factory and it off, to, off the farm and, and off the land and into a factory and into a job, most people understand that very well. They know how to stop at the stop sign. And how to follow the rules, they know how to drive on the left hand side of the road. Most people need to be able to follow the rules. So, when all of a sudden you have complete control over your time, it's a burden that most people cannot handle. And so, what they do is they just pilfer their time and they throw it around and sprinkle it like it's magic fairy dust and that it's going to be forever and ever and ever. And of course, it's not. You get to be old really quick. So, the number one, I won't go into this very long because I think. Linda said we want to be respectful about half an hour of call, is that the number one thing that you must, must do is really understand that when you wake up in the morning at six o'clock, seven o'clock, whenever you wake up, you've got about 15 to 18 hours that you can control and you get to decide where they go. Now, I don't know a bigger sentence than that. I just, you need to sit with that. This is way more important than your money. It's more important than your health. Is to just eat the broccoli, drink the juice, move on. You get to decide where those 10, 12, 15, 16 hours go. Now, some of you will say, no, Scott, you don't understand. I've got four kids. Well, I got four kids too. You say, well, I don't understand. I have to go to work. Great, then log on and go to work. But in this day and age, you can decide, is that work going to take three hours or is it going to take five hours? I was just talking to my son yesterday about the concept of the 10,000 hours. Are any of you familiar with the concept of 10,000 hours? If you do something for 10,000 hours, you become an expert. Is anybody familiar with that? A couple of you are. So I had a friend of mine um, for dinner the other night. She sat on the other side of the table um, and her name was uh, Stephanie Rice. Is anybody familiar with Stephanie Rice? So Stephanie Rice has three Olympic gold medals. She has uh, five world uh, records uh, and at 20 years old was the single best planet, swimmer on the planet. She's a member of both the Australian Swimming Hall of Fame and the World Swimming Hall of Fame. She's a rock star. She's a mate of mine. She came out for dinner the other night because she's a bit bored and lonely, sat at her at the table and the kids and I talked about you know, what she did and so forth. And we talked about this concept called the 10,000 hours. And what I was explaining to my son, he goes, wow, dad. That's, that's going to take a long time. And we did some math. And 10,000 hours can either take an hour a day for 10,000 days, or it can take about three years. So you get to decide. Do you want to get to 10,000 hours in three years, or do you want to get to 10,000 hours in 10,000 days? When you decide what your time is going to be used for in the morning, do you want to take four hours doing something, or do you want to work like four women and get it done in one hour? Like, what do you want to do with your time? So my first number one tactical strategy for you is, is that you must have a schedule. You've got to have a schedule. You have to have pre-decided, not in the morning, and your schedule is never, never based on how you feel. Oh, just feel like doing some yoga this morning. Well, then you should have thought about that yesterday because this morning right now, it says nine o'clock, do a Zoom call with Linda and her team. So you don't get to make that decision. So you must have a schedule and pre-decide in advance. Now, here's the beautiful thing. 
The world's completely changing right now. You can't do a month long schedule. The most that any of us can do is plan till Friday. That's it. Just hang on till Friday. And by Friday, every rule could change. Every scenario could change. So don't have to plan till end of the month or end of the quarter. We're not doing that. But certainly you've got to have a schedule for the day and the week. When am I working out? We're all working out from home on the back porch or in the room or in your bedroom or on the, in the grass somewhere. This morning, my wife and three of the kids are doing yoga on the back porch. So you've got to work out. All of us have to work. Are you working two hours, four hours, six hours or eight hours? Everybody has to work. It's pretty simple. So when is that going to fit in? Is it morning? Is it noon? Is it night? You got kids at home, you got to educate them. So you got to get online with them and Zoom and Skype and do stuff online and log into their school platform and do stuff like that. You still have to find time to date your spouse and hang out with your spouse and do cool stuff and play and connect and all those beautiful things. Hopefully, you're still finding time to connect with yourself, whether that's you're playing guitar, you're reading a book. I sat in the infrared sauna last night for 45 minutes and read one of my favorite books and just feel magnificent this morning because of it. But you got to get your schedule set up. And then and here's my best coaching. Let the schedule be the boss. Now, if you didn't write that one down, that's one worth writing down. Let the schedule be the boss. Let the schedule make all the decisions for you. I don't want to waste time. Worse, I don't want to waste energy making decisions all day every day. I've got enough energy in me to make about five decisions a day. And I want them to be important decisions. One decision this morning was, what am I going to chat about today to you guys? And Hopefully it's valuable. I don't want to waste energy deciding what do I feel like for breakfast? What do I feel like doing today? Hmm, what do I feel like needs doing? Like they're just bad questions. Pre-decide, get the schedule set up and just follow the schedule and let the schedule be the boss. And at the end of the night, when you set tomorrow's schedule or when you set the schedule for the week, then you can then work out how many workouts do I need? How many uh, hours of time in the office do I need? Work in my business, social media, planning and so forth and that. Never let your times cross over, which leads me to my second tactical strategy. I'm just checking in. Linda, how are we doing? We doing okay? I love it. I love when you talk time. It's very okay. helpful. So everyone's still with me. Now, some of you will say, but Scott, you don't understand. I've got a baby. You don't understand. I've got a toddler. You don't understand. I've got a needy husband. Well, trust me, I do understand. They are all excuses. Now, if you're on mum duty, you got to nurse a baby or nurse a three-year-old or nurse your husband. Um, I understand that, but you've got to really get good at doing this thing I'll chat about now, which is you've got to get zones. Now, I do love sports. This is nearly a sports metaphor. You've got to have physical zones in your house. Physical zones in your house. You cannot, and this is a classic mistake people that work from home do, they have their shit everywhere. So they've got paperwork on the kitchen desk. They've got some files on their bedside table. They've got some, you know, products lying around on the, on the floor in the spare room. And there's shit everywhere. And it just, it doesn't work. And whether you live in a large house or whether you live in a small apartment, it's exactly the same. I've got a little boat. It's 47 foot long, which sounds big. But trust me, for six of us, it is not. You've got to use the space well. So, for example, right now, where are you working from? Are you working from a spare room? Are you working from a desk that's in your bedroom? Are you working from the kitchen table? Are you working from a hallway nightstand? I don't care. But what has to happen is based on your schedule, different zones have to come into play. Based on your schedule, different zones have to come into play. So we have a round kitchen table. It's where we have our breakfast in the morning. It's pretty simple stuff. Uh, we have breakfast from 7.30 till about 8.15 and we spread blueberries on the floor and knock quinoa on the floor and make smoothies and do all the other stuff that you guys do as well. But come 8.15, that's got to be packed away, dishes in the sink, the table's got to be wiped, and out comes four little boxes, and that's got their school stuff in it. Everybody gets out their laptop and their device and their books, and I load them up on the table, and that now is the school table until 12.30. That's the school table. And so you can't snack at it, you can't take your foot over there. You're going to have a snack, you have to get up and leave, and go and eat your snack, and come back. You can't snack at your school table in school unless it's fruit break. So we just follow the zone rules. And at 12.30, great. All the books are packed up. All the books go back in the bags. The bags go back in the boxes. The boxes get pushed into the corner of the floor. And that comes back to being the lunch table. And in the afternoon, it's the arts and crafts area. Same thing on the back deck. 
back to, we're all working out at home right now. We've got our BOSUs and our medicine balls and our stretchy bands. And if you're lucky enough to get some dumbbells before they all got sold out, you've got your yoga mat. Great. So you're working out on the back deck or you're working out in the lounge room. Great. So you pick the coffee table up, you move the coffee table. Great. Set up your yoga mat, get your video set up or whatever your workout is, get your video set up on the whiteboard. You do your 30 minutes of jumping, burping, squats and whatever you're doing. Don't leave your fucking shit there. So well, I'm going to use it tomorrow. No, roll up your yoga mat, pack it away, pack away your stretchy bands, pack away your medicine ball, pack away your workout program, put it all back in the box, put the coffee table back. And that now is the lounge room again. Now you might say, well, that seems like a waste of time because we're going to work out tomorrow. I understand that, but trust me, your brain works well when there's little boxes, just follow the boxes. The difference here between being conscious and unconscious is that when you're unconscious, you're following other people's little schedules and other people's little boxes. The significant difference here is here, you're following your boxes and your schedule. Make sure you follow it. So physical zones. The last place I'd want to have work is in my bedroom. Now you might say, Scotty, I have to work in my bedroom. My husband's at home. Lots of husbands and wives right now working out. They don't really like each other that much because they're spending 16 hours a day awake. But if you're working out from your bedroom, great. Work out. 9 o'clock, 8.30, 2 o'clock, whenever you start work, unpack your office bag, put your stuff out, open your laptop, get out your stuff, your products, your spreadsheets, whatever you do. Work for two hours. And when you're done, pack all that stuff up, put it away, put your cushions back on the bed, and turn that back into a bedroom. Don't be having that bedroom space become this dumping ground warehouse with bloody products and books and office and shit everywhere. Doesn't work. Keep everything in the zone. Now, I got one more thing I want to do. And that is this. Um, the third strategy I would say is you must, must, must. I don't think that's the word. I don't know if that's how you spell it. You've got to have breaks. When you plan and schedule, the biggest mistake most folks make is they overschedule. You gotta plan your breaks. And your breaks, very obviously, should be about every 50 minutes. Human brain can't function for more than 50 minutes. It just it can't. Human body can. Physical work is easier than mental work. That's why you can dig a ditch for 12 hours a day. You can't read an encyclopedia. 12 hours a day. So every 50 minutes, plan to get up, stretch your legs, have a herb tea. I've got some nice, I've got two brews of iced tea going on right now in the fridge. I've got a pomegranate tea and a rooibos tea. I'm pretty excited about drinking both of those today. Um, just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, plan your 50 minute breaks. Every 50 minutes, get up. And if I go back to this one here, holy smokes, in my 10 minute break, there's no dickheads. I've got total control. There's no commute and my family are in the room next door. How good's that? Which means six, seven, eight times a day, you get to go get a five minute cuddle. And trust me, you can get a lot done in five minutes. So plan your 50 minute breaks. Every 50 minutes, take a break. Every three hours, take a 35 minute break or a 45 minute break, eat a sandwich, eat a salad. And in that break, get some of your other needs done, which means go play with the kids, go eat a sandwich, go play guitar. Now, one quick, one just quick comment for the ladies. I hope this is okay to say. And, and that might be this. Forget the fucking laundry. So stop thinking that because you're in your house 24 hours a day, it has to look like Donna Hay is coming for a photo shoot. Donna Hay was wrong. A house does not meant to be like that. Everybody who posts fucking stupid photos on Instagram, they're renting borrowed houses and fucking using those photos and saying, well, this is my life. I'm here on my white linen couch in my white linen dress with my fucking blueberry smoothie. Knock that shit off. Don't be thinking while I'm working for 50 minutes on my business, my spreadsheets, my taxes, whatever it is. Oh, I've just got to go pop one more load of washing on. No, that needs to be done in the schedule. In the morning, it should say, do housework for half an hour. Don't just keep thinking, I'll just keep, I'll just check the dishwasher. I'll just check the washing machine. I'll just check the kids are okay. No, there's no flitting from spot to spot. Do something for 45, 50 minutes, take a 10 minute break. Do something for 50 minutes, take a 10 minute break. Do something for 30 minutes. Maybe it's only a 30 minute task. Take a five minute break. 
And that, I'm telling you, is how you'll be more effective and more productive. And there is no better feeling on earth than getting to the end of the day and feeling like you did what you said you were going to do. There's no better feeling on earth than going, wow, it was a busy day, but got a lot done. Like we did this and we did that and I did this and we did that. It was awesome. And I know that because I've had the opposite feeling of getting to the end of the day and going, fuck, man. Wasted the whole day, faffed around, fucked around, got nothing done. Ah, that was a bad day. And trust me, that's not the feeling you want. So find out what your five simple beliefs are going to be. I gave you mine. You can copy them. You can make up your own. I know some of you are going to take belief number four and really take that to heart. And then follow these three things. Get a schedule. Let the schedule be the boss. I'm not in charge. I'm not in charge. The schedule's in the charge. Make sure you've got physical zones and follow the physical zones. And you might need to communicate this to your team. If you've got a team living in the house, family, sisters, spouse, kids, whatever, communicate, hey, these zones are for this. We'll have to keep everything packed neatly and tightly. A bit like that Montessori model of the world where you can take a toy out and play with it, but you got to pack it up and put it away. Pretty simple stuff. And then make sure you schedule and plan your breaks and really get fulfilled on your five and 10 minute breaks for the day. Linda, I'm going to stop there and let you Love take it. over. I love it. I think we love all of the time management tips. People are going crazy. We're live on Facebook as well. And I really, you may not know this, but you really took me to task on time management maybe two years ago. I came to the realisation that I could no longer fly by the seat of my pants. It had served me well, but you had shown me that there was a big cost. And once I got really associated to the cost of not having a schedule anymore, I changed it. So what would you say to people who were like me, like, well, what if I don't want to do spin class on Tuesday and it's blocked off and my schedule has to be the boss because I liked flexibility and variety. What would you say to us? You get to have flexibility and variety while you're doing the planning, but not once the plan's in place. <laughs> you're such a taskmaster. If that's it. And I'll tell you what, I'll say this, is that, and the good news with your plan, and remember, I make a lot of money as a coach. Um, when you set a schedule for the week, and you're obviously going to plan five things. It's not complicated. You're going to plan your business time, your relationship time, your parenting time, your health time, and whatever you do to feed your brain. So whether that's reading books or going to seminars or coming to Zoom calls, you're going to plan those five things. All of us are planning those same five things every week. None of us are special here. Um, I would say this. Your goal in your schedule, Linda, is not to reach 100% success. That's a stupid number. I'm looking for 80%. Oh, I love eight, that. Eight is the goal. If I planned five workouts and I get four, booyah. If I've planned to do 30 posts and I did 25, booyah. If I plan to, I don't know, whatever your other plans are, I'm looking for 80%, but I'm looking for two things. I'm looking for 80% across the board. So 80% of my health, 80% of my business, 80% of my relationship, 80% of my parenting. I'm looking for 80% across the board. Imagine that. I don't know about you, but when I went to high school, that's called straight A's. That's called straight A's. I'm not looking for 100%. And I'm not looking for 100% in one category and a C, which means 60% in another category. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for 80%. So I said I'd do 30 posts. I did 20, okay, nearly there. Said I'd work out five times, I worked out four. Okay, I'm nearly there. I said I'd uh, you know, do four hours of guitar lessons this week. I did three, fingers are a bit sore. Okay, I'm nearly there. Like I'm looking for 80%. That's the first thing. Give up this 100% thing, that's stupid. Now, the caveat to that would be that this week's 80 is next week's 70. This week's 80 is next week's 70. So a real simple, obvious one, posting, if that's what you're doing right now, or reach outs, if you're all in Juice Plus. It's like, great, I said I'd do 30 this week. I did 20, okay? That's not bad. 20 is now my minimum. 20 is now 70%, which means I've got to do at least 25 next week. I might be reaching for 90 next week. Well, I did 75, okay? That's pretty good. 75 is my new minimum, okay? I gotta go for 80 next week. So each week I'm looking for 80% across the board, which again, in my model of the world is straight A's. I would be happy to get straight A's. 
Um, and then I'm going to keep adjusting that. So if I worked out five times last week and I really did work out five times last week, okay, great. Well, maybe I'm looking to take that to six or maybe I'm looking to not take it to six. I'm looking to maintain it, but add, maybe I did five cardio workouts. Maybe I'm looking to add a session of yoga to it. Or maybe I did five yoga workouts because I like yoga, but maybe I need to add some structural workout. One of the things that I... And moving through as a 52-year-old man is that what I'm supposed to do for workouts is not what I want to do. What I want to do is I want to go run every day. Now, 52-year-old bodies aren't meant to run. That's not a limiting belief. That's just science. What 52-year-old body is supposed to do is 30 minutes of high-impact, high-intensity, body-weighted structural movement. It's not nearly as fun as going for a run, but that's what I need to do. So rarely am I asking myself, what do I want to do? And I'm usually asking myself, Linda, what do I need to do right now? I need to do is based on my commitments, my goals, the team I'm serving, the team being my spouse, my family, my customers, so forth. What do I need to do? So. Um, we've got a great question here, and I think it's going to be relevant to um, the hundreds that are on live and um, on here as well. Can you speak into parenting with young children? Maybe just, yeah, just clarify, is that working from home and parenting at the same time, feeling you're doing a good job of both or just parenting full stop? Well, the, the, care, the care, I have young children, I've got four. Uh, I have worked from home all of the time that my wife was pregnant and we were, we, we. I was pregnant four times. Um, um, in the four pregnancies my wife had and the almost six years of breastfeeding she did and the uh, I don't know, seven years we had of nappies. Um, I was home for all of that and worked from home for all that. Um, so I know a little bit. Now I'm not a mom. So I'm going to say everything I say just very carefully. The first thing I'd say is I'm not looking to be 100% perfect. I'm looking for that. That's the first thing. So Donna Hay is just a bad person. Our houses are not meant to look like that. If you come to my house, high probability you're stepping on Lego or a frozen blueberry. Just letting you know, because I don't live in Donna Hayes' house. Um, so I'm looking for 80% is what I'm looking for. That's the first thing. And then when you are a busy mom, if you've got, you know, one to three-year-olds is different to four to seven-year-olds. Obviously, different needs. So I've got one to three. I get it. You need to be nursing and jiggling and bouncing um, and so forth. And from sort of four to seven, you can sort of buy some more time with some interaction uh, with a book, with a puzzle, with a block set, with a jigsaw, with a, just a big pile of paint and some paper, some screen time if you must, although I, I'm a little bit anti-screens. Um, so what I would say is pre-think as best you can, what time do I need and how can I get it? So for example, with young children, I get it, you need to be with them if, if you're feeding and so forth, um, they're on your hip all the time. But you do get pockets where they have a 40 minute nap. You do get pockets where they can be interacted with by a sibling or a spouse or a babysitter of someone. And so for me, when I would watch my wife and we were very conscious of this, when you get a pocket of time where you aren't jiggling a three-year-old, you gotta go use it really efficiently. And I'm telling you, all of you have got different ways of using your time. How many of you, the day before you travel, how many of you on the day before you travel can get three days of stuff done? How many of you get three days in the hour before you catch the plane? If you've got to leave the house in an hour or there's a shuttle bus coming to pick you up, how many get three hours of shit done in one hour? How many can do that? Of course you can. Now we call that in my house an Olympic hour. Now here's the challenge. Most people wait till an external circumstance comes up to produce that level of performance. They wait until, oh, fuck, it's got to be going on an hour. So the, the best version of them turns up. I would say, no, I'm in control. I've got this 45-minute window where the kids are asleep. I've got this 45-minute window where the kids are playing with the blocks. Boom, let's go. Let's send out 100 messages. Like, literally, let's work. Like, at the end of this 45 minutes, I'm going to collapse like I just crossed the finish line in a marathon. And you might go, well, I'll be exhausted when the kid wakes up. No, you won't be because the human body is amazing. What will happen is 
as you switch. You do that for 45 minutes, and now you go back to parenting. Your brain, your body, your biochemistry will switch. And because you're not doing the same activity, your body and brain and energy will be more than refreshed for the new activity, whatever that happens to be. So look for structuring, look for systems. You know I mean, Linda, I'm a big one for having teams. So even in this 21st, even in this chapter in right now, you can still find ways to go, right, kids, if your kids are older, we've got 10 and 12 year olds in the house. I'm gonna be here for 45 minutes. We're doing this thing, giddy up, let's go. And then you let them know, all right, kids, Dad has to go work for an hour. Everybody do your schoolwork. When we come back in an hour, we're going to play Monopoly or we're going to the pool or we're going for trampoline. Be quiet. Don't open the door. Well, I don't know if it's okay to share. Um, we have a thing called the no blood rule in my house. Please and go ahead. The no blood rule says this. I work from home. I literally work from the spare bedroom of my house. And to be clear, I've made more than $10 million from the spare room of my house. So you don't need a big fancy office. Uh, and the rule in my house is you cannot open, if the door's open, you can come on in. If my door's open and you've got some pressing needs because you can't find a piece of Lego or your sister hit you on the head, you can come on in. If the door's closed, my children know you literally cannot open that door unless there's blood. And when we first started this rule, the kids would knock on the door and open and go, that, that, that. I've got some blood. And so now the rule is, and they know it, you cannot open the door unless there is blood gushing out of your head and pouring onto the floor. And you know what? They never open the door. They never open the door. I could, my, Karina can be gone and I can say, kids, dad's got a call, like right now, be on the call for an hour and not one child will open the door. Now, are they yelling and screaming at each other? Probably. Are they fighting? Probably. No one opened the door because they know the no blood rule. So I would start to teach and train your peeps, whether they're five or 10 or 12 or 14, that there's rules around that. And remember, trust me, people like systems. They function well when they get to the pedestrian crossing, there's no one around them and the red light's saying, don't walk, don't walk. People follow that. So give your team some simple systems to follow. Applies for husbands too. I didn't say that, Kathy, you did. I'm looking out for more questions. And oh, someone said, so someone said here, uh, mine does too, but the office is open. Great. Get a sticker, Lee. Get a sticker saying office is closed. And when you need 45 minutes, don't let the physical parameters of your space be a reason to be controlled. If you're in an open area because you're working in the hallway, I get it. Just literally get a red piece of cardboard and stick it up on a bit of blue tack and go, everybody in the house, listen. When mum's red sticker is up, you're not allowed to speak to me unless there's blood gushing out of your head. Does anybody not understand? Raise your hand if you understand. Great, red sticker, no talking. Green sticker, you can ask mum for help. Like just educate them. <laughs> you're laughing, but it's true. I know, you've taught me well. We're hard asses here too. They, the this, this schedule is everything. I can't actually believe I live without a schedule for so long. Um, as we wrap up, and thank you so much for all this extra time and questions, it's, it's amazing. What, what do you think the most, I, I know we love quality questions, what do you think the most important questions are when you're sitting down planning your week? I, I like to do um, the week. Now, you did it really fast as if everyone already does this, but I don't think that they do, to be honest. When you said you've got to plan the areas of your life, parenting, I would say this relationships, health. Let, let's maybe have this conversation another day because it's a long conversation. I'm looking down there, she's looking here. Are let's you going to come back? Another day because it's a long conversation. What I will say this is that you do need to know what is it you're working towards. There's got to be an ultimate goal. So I would say to you this I'm going to give you a quick plug. I need you all to go to my Instagram profile, which is just Scott Harris dot au scott harris dot au and in the bio there is a link to a very simple process and it's just my seven simple steps to how i get anything i want done they're not complicated they're not fancy i think you can see from my five core beliefs they're very simple things from my three 
simple strategies. They're three simple things. If you go to scottharris.au, even if you're not normally on Instagram, that's okay. Follow me and download that little workbook about, and it's just seven simple steps to just get whatever you want. And I think if you download that and read it, it's a magic book. It only works if you read it. Um, it won't take very long. It's like five pages. Um, you might have some more structure and framework. I'm a big one for, look, Linda, you know this, I'm a big one for having systems set up that support me. I don't want rules that limit me, but I want systems to support me. So if there's a way to get something done quickly and easily, that's only seven steps. Well, why would I just follow the seven steps? And then I don't have to think about it. I just do it. And then if we want, and if there's enough noise about it, maybe we can have a conversation in a week's time about planning and about how to plan your week and about what that might look like. But everyone needs, I don't want to educate people on these calls. Have them go read that seven page, that little five page book first, scottharris.au, follow me, download the book. And then we can have that chat if you like in a couple of days time or a week's time about how do I now plan my week? Now that I've got, because what you need to plan your week, most people start their planning with, well, what do I have to do? Just a stupid question. How we want to plan our week is go, what am I working on? What am I looking to achieve? And I think if you get that little workbook on the seven simple steps, you have a greater idea of what are the three to five things that I'm working towards each week. And when you know that, the planning actually is pretty easy. I love that. It's, <laughs> it is a game changer. Got it. So with that, otherwise, PM me, DM me, any of those things that you need to do. I'm not on LinkedIn. I'm not on Twitter, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Um, happy to help. But again, please, please do go to Instagram and follow me. And please do go download that little workbook, uh, which is the link in the bio. Even if any of you have never, ever, ever jumped on. Is, can you put it on Facebook, Leah? We can put a link up. She can put a link. She'll put a link. Leah will put a link on Facebook as well. So if you're not on Insta, you can go to Facebook and see it there as well. And Linda might even post it here. I will post it and it's Scott Harris Facebook. There's an official Scott Harris that we're looking for. Yes, he looks way more official. Done. All right, I hope that was useful, guys. Go have some fun. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to go to gallery view so Scotty can see. Huge thanks. Beam in some love. Um, I loved all those four things. I've got my 10 extra reasons. Keep those reasons beside you so we control Absolutely. how we choose to show up and feel every day. Thank you, my friend. I'm super grateful for you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. And you too. See you here tomorrow at 9 a.m., Monday to Friday. See Bye ya. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.